We are less than a month away from the start of the 2024 NFL Draft, and there's a ton of mock drafts that are being put out nowadays. And Matt Miller from ESPN just put out a massive seven-round mock draft for every single team in the National Football League, which of course includes the Washington Commanders. Today, we're going to be breaking down the nine picks that Miller makes for the Burgundy and Gold during this mock draft. So before we get into that, make sure you click that thumbs up icon, like today's show, if you are a real one. The real ones know that clicking that thumbs up icon boosts the YouTube algorithm on this uh, particular video, which really does help us out, helps us reach new audiences. And it really is a big help, guys. So if you would do me a favor right now and click that thumbs up icon, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, so now let's get into this ESPN mock draft where Matt Miller decides to take Jaden Daniels, quarterback out of LSU, over guys like Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix Jr. at that number two overall spot. This is what Miller has to say about the pick. Everything is new in Washington. Ownership, general manager, and coach. And there will be a new quarterback, too. Daniels' this dual threat ability is an ideal fit for new offensive coordinator Cliff Kingsbury's version of the air raid offense with back-to-back -back seasons of over 1,000 rushing yards and a nearly perfect QBR of 99.5 on passes over 20 yards. Daniels would thrive with wide receivers Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson opening things up down the field. The commanders will have a tough decision to make between Daniels and North Carolina's Drake May, but I see Daniels as the clear-cut QB2. He is also ready to play immediately after starting 55 games in college. May might have more upside, but Daniels is ready to excel right now. And I actually agree with Matt Miller here that Daniels is the better overall fit for what Cliff Kingsbury wants to do. He likes to spread them out, shotgun, and that kind of system. You know, I think it really does benefit from having a quarterback like Jaden Daniels who can take advantage of the, the defense with his legs. I mean, seriously, if you, if you as a defense have to spread out, especially your secondary players, to cover a bunch of speed on the perimeter, it's going to be really, really tough to keep up with a quarterback like Jaden Daniels, who is in a legitimately dynamic threat with his legs. I think if he would have ran the 40-yard dash this year, it probably would be in the four threes. Uh, and then something that makes him truly special is that when he cuts, when he's a rusher, he doesn't lose speed. It's really a special thing to watch. And as a passer, he's got clean mechanics, good pocket footwork. Uh, and overall, he's a good enough, polished enough passer to be a starting quarterback in the league starting next year. Drake May needs a little bit more time, in my opinion. So the Washington Commanders, I think, need a day one starter. I think Jaden Daniels fits that bill for the Burgundy and Gold. Now, what say you guys? Let me know down there in the comments section. Would Jaden Daniels lead the Washington Commanders to the playoffs in year one as a rookie? Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section with a yes or a no for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time, but give me a yes or no to today's pinned question. Then in round two, uh, Matt Miller actually has a very interesting pick here, taking Darius Robinson, the massive edge rusher, out of Mizzou at pick number 36. Now, Darius was somebody that was a big standout at the Senior Bowl this year because of the athleticism, because of the size that he brings to the table. And honestly, in this 4-3 type system that Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. are going to be bringing to the defensive side of the ball this year, Darius Robinson is a very good fit as a 4-3 defensive end. He is by far, in my opinion, the best run defending edge rusher in this class. He simply cannot be moved off his spot. Uh, which is something that you really like about him. He was a team captain at Mizzou last year, and he's got one really good pass rush move, which is like a push-pull move, but that's really about it. So that's the one thing that I'm kind of wary about uh, Darius Robinson is he, he doesn't have a whole lot of moves in his bag, uh, but he is somebody that has number one edge rusher upside, and he's somebody that can be an every-down starter for the commanders right away. Then at pick number 40, uh, Miller has the commanders taking Patrick Paul, offensive tackle, out of Houston. Now, personally, guys, I am lower on Patrick Paul. And I don't think that this is a good pick at number 40 whatsoever. Now, he's got long arms, all right? He's got an all-pro caliber physical profile, all right? This guy can move. He's got the size that you look for, everything. He's played on both right and left side of the offensive line. But the technique on his film is... Definitely needs work at the Senior Bowl. He was getting toasted time and time again 
in the one-on-ones. He really got exposed uh, in that environment going up against some of the best edge rushers in the country. And I think that Patrick Paul needs at least a full good year sitting behind a true, uh, you know, kind of like a veteran before he can even think about being a legitimate starting tackle in the National Football League. Because I think if you throw him into the fire, he's going to fail. Uh, and that's not something that's going to be good for his confidence moving forward. I actually break down my list of the top offensive tackle draft targets for the Washington Commanders on a video that we currently have on the channel. I'm going to put the link to that one in the comments and description so you can get my full thoughts on Patrick Paul. But long story short, guys, I have a third round grade on him. And if the Commanders take Patrick Paul at the top of round two here at pick number 40, I'll be pretty upset about it. Now coming up here, rounds three through seven of this mock draft from ESPN's Matt Miller. Some very interesting picks on the way. But before we get into that, let's have a word from our sponsor here at Game Time, which is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater in your area. Guys, Game Time is perfect for someone like me because I'm somebody who likes to get tickets last minute. And not only does Game Time have the lowest price guarantee on any ticket you buy to any event, but also they have flash deals just hours before the start of your event so you can get even lower price tickets at last minute time. So it's absolutely fantastic. I love that Game Time has a really super easy to use user interface that allows you to just Get your tickets in two taps and then it's sent directly to your phone instead of your email. Another great feature that makes Game Time the fastest growing ticketing app in the United States of America. Game Time is the only ticketing app uh, that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase as well. You can see the view from your seat before you buy. Another great feature so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive at the arena or the stadium. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets now with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS. One word, all caps. It's right down there in the bottom of your screen for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price. Guaranteed. Now we get into round three here, and Matt Miller has the commanders taking Adisa Isaac edge rusher out of Penn State. So they have, so he has the commanders addressing edge rusher twice in their first four picks. And honestly, this is another one that I'm not a big fan of, folks. I have a round three grade on Adisa Isaac. And honestly, I could see him going in round four because I don't see the athletic upside to be like a true number one edge rusher in the league. And honestly, I'm not even sure if he was going to be a number two edge rusher in the league because I'm not sure if he's got the pass rushing upside to play on third and long. I think that he's a good run defender. I think he's really good in that part of the game. I mean, Penn State definitely coached him up well, but in my opinion, he is not the best pass rusher and I don't necessarily see the tools there uh, to project him as a high end edge rusher in terms of pass rushing. So I do think that he's a decent player. I think he's somebody that can contribute as a good early down edge rusher that can defend the run on early downs right away in the league. But I'm not sure if that's what the Washington Commanders are going to be looking for. Uh, but I guess we'll have to see on that. Then in round three as well, uh, they have the Commanders taking a corner here. Same guy I took in my most recent Commanders mock draft. Kyrie Jackson, cornerback out of Oregon. Now, there's a reason why Kyrie, at his size and at his speed, is going in round three. All right, he does have instances of bad footwork, bad technique on his film, which is why he's going a little bit lower. But this guy has extremely long arms, plays extremely physical at the catch point and in press. And that's exactly what the Washington Commanders are going to be uh, asking of him as he enters the National Football League here because Dan Quinn, Joe Witt Jr., they like to have a big, physical, strong outside corner that can play true press man coverage, and that's what Kyrie Jackson does best. It's kind of that Richard Sherman role uh, in Dan Quinn's defense, and I think that he's going to look take one look at Kyrie Jackson's film and say, this guy looks a little bit like Richard Sherman. Now, obviously, he has a long way to go to get to that kind of level of true dominance on the outside and press, but I do think he has the skill set, he's got the long arms, he's got the physicality, and he's got the recovery speed to truly become a lockdown corner in this league. And if you're getting that kind of guy in round three, I think that's a really good value. Then also in round three, to finish it out, we get another Nittany Lion here with Theo Johnson, tight end out of Penn State. And this is another pick here that I do like, guys, because I think Johnson is going to be a steal 
for somebody in the draft. Like, there's some very explosive tight end prospects in this year's draft class. Brock Bowers, obviously. Jatavian Sanders out of Texas. There's some good tight ends at the top of this class. But I think Theo Johnson, I'm probably slotting him in as the number three tight end in this class. He's a good blocker. He's a good receiver. He's got good measurables. He's got he's kind of a complete package. Now, he's not quite on like the superstar level prospect like a Brock Bowers or a Jatavian Sanders is at. But I do think in round three, Theo Johnson is probably going to come off the board. Uh, and I'm, I'd be a little bit surprised if he's, if he's actually here at number 100. I think he's that good of a player. But if he is here at number 100, I would love to bring him in uh, to, for him to learn behind Zach Ertz for a year. Then we go to round five, where ESPN projects the commanders will take Isaiah Williams, wide receiver out of Illinois. And, you know, this is a day three uh, you know, later round receiver, maybe nothing special here, but I do think this is something uh, to kind of bolster the depth here with the Washington Commanders. Receiving core with Cliff Kingsbury running all these four and five wide receiver sets that he likes to run. Then also in round five at pick number 152, they have the Commanders taking Tommy Eichenberg, the inside linebacker out of Ohio State. I see Eichenberg as somebody that can fill a rotational role to start his NFL career, but I'm not sure if the Commanders are actually going to be looking for an inside linebacker. They signed both Frankie Luvu and Bobby Wagner uh, and, and uh, another guy as well in NFL free agency. So I'm not sure. And th of course they have Jamin Davis. So I'm not sure really what kind of need they have here at inside linebacker, but I do like Tommy Eichenberg as a player on day three. Then in round seven here, they're going to take a center slash guard prospect out of NC State, Dylan McMahon. Uh, I do think that that's probably where he's going to be slotted in there in round seven around there. He's kind of a lower end interior offensive lineman prospect. Somebody you're bringing in, hopefully he can be some good depth for you along the offensive line. So here is Matt Miller's mock draft hall. Nine picks for the Washington Commanders here. They get Jaden Daniels to be their day one starting quarterback in 2024. You get Darius Robinson to be hopefully your future number one edge rusher. Patrick Paul to hopefully be a really good offensive tackle for you in the future. Adisa Isaac, the edge rusher. Kyrie Jackson, a pick I really like there in round three. Theo Johnson uh, to be a nice weapon for Jaden Daniels in the years to come. Isaiah Williams, Tommy Eichenberg, and Dylan McMahon. So do me a favor right now. Grade this mock draft for me down there in the comments section. Give me an A, a B, a C, a D, or an F. And for me personally, guys, I'll give it a B. I mean, there's some good picks in here. I think the Jaden Daniels pick is correct. I like Darius Robinson a little bit, especially with the fit here in Washington, the Kyrie Jackson and the Theo Johnson picks. Really good picks there in the middle rounds. But the Patrick Paul thing, uh, the Adisa Isaac pick, you know, I'm definitely a bit shaky on those. So I won't give it an A here, but I think it's relatively solid. So I'll give it a B. Now, that'll be it for today's show, guys. I appreciate you sticking around with me to the very end. Make sure you click that subscribe button right now for more Commander's Draft coverage all throughout the 2024 offseason.